We all remember a few months back when Trump tried to buy Greenland from the Kingdom of Denmark. While the idea was laughed at by the media and seemed preposterous to many, the idea of buying Greenland is not a sudden crazy idea and has been considered by the US multiple times dating back to 1867 and as recently as 1946. If the US were to buy the territory, it would provide numerous benefits to both the United States and Denmark. First, we need to detail in what scenario the US could buy Greenland and for how much. While it may seem complicated, buying foreign land is a legal act of diplomacy that is been done for millennia, so all the US needs to do is to convince Denmark to sell the territory. If this is done, and negotiations are set up to discuss a price, and no laws would have been broken, and the transition of Greenland would occur peacefully. Well, it's hard to nail down a price in Greenland, we can turn to history to estimate one. In 1867, the US bought Alaska for $7.2 million, which is about $130 million today. Greenland is 1.5 times the size of Alaska, meaning that at the very least, the Greenland price tag is at least 50% more at $195 million. However, I expect the price for Greenland to be much higher as Russia was just trying to get rid of Alaska while Denmark values Greenland highly. This is why I would put the sale of Greenland somewhere in the hundreds of billions of dollars with 550 billion being the most likely estimate for the purchase of Greenland. Currently, the Danish national debt is about $111 billion, meaning that the sale of Greenland could help Denmark pay off its national debt five times over. If the national debt were paid off, then Denmark could focus on other issues plaguing the country such as their skilled labor shortage or rampant tax fraud, which 63% of Danes agree are two of the biggest issues in the country today. While the country may not be able to completely fix these issues, they can certainly make a dent out of them with $439 billion at their disposal. As for the American side of the purchase, they will not be done spending money after the Initial 550 billion. Every year that Greenland is in American hands, the US will need to subsidize $650 million a year to the island in order to keep their economy afloat because Greenland is unable to sustain itself without a large subsidy. While the idea of buying something that does not provide an immediate profit seems like a bad deal, it is not due to the vast resources present on Greenland along with its strategic location in the Arctic. Right now, almost 80% of the entire surface area of Greenland is covered in an extremely thick ice sheet that on average is one mile thick with the estimated total volume to be just under 3 million cubic kilometers of ice. However, due to global warming, that ice is melting at a rapid pace. Every 10 years, around 0.05% of that ice melts into fresh water which comes out to about 1.5 thousand cubic kilometers of harvitable fresh water every year. It's no surprise that access to fresh water is a crisis that is only going to expand in the future. In 2020, 11% of the world is already without access to fresh water and that number is estimated to increase to 42% in 2020, which would be about 4 billion people at the time. If the US were to have control of this vast reserve of untapped fresh water, then it could increase its world leverage power by a drastic amount as it can now provide a great deal of fresh water to any country it feels the need to. In already powerful countries such as India or China, their water crisis is expected to reach a third of their population by 2050, meaning that if the US were to control the untapped Greenland water supply, it could easily put India in China under its thumb as it possesses a way to help out with one of their biggest humanitarian issues. While water is definitely a valuable resource that can come out of Greenland, it is not the only resource as Greenland is expected to have vast oil reserves. The US Geological Survey estimates that 22% of all untapped oil in the world is in Greenland, which amounts to more than 400 billion barrels of oil. To provide a visual, that's 50% more oil than Saudi Arabia, the largest exporter of oil in the world. The reason why this oil has not been harvested yet is because of the unbearably cold temperature present in northern Greenland that make it impossible to sustain human habitation long enough to extract and transport oil. But as mentioned before, with the Arctic temperature on the rise, this might not be the case for the next couple decades. Other than the resources of the island, its prime location in the Arctic also makes it a worthwhile venture for the US. One way this is true is how the possession of Greenland could help the US secure the Northwest Passage. The Northwest Passage is a series of lakes and rivers that cut across Canada connecting the eastern and western side of the Arctic Ocean to which ships can then move on to the Atlantic or Pacific. Currently, the Northwest Passage is almost impossible to navigate due to the sheer amount of ice that traps ships and slowly starves the crew for months or even years on occasion. But with global warming on the rise, the ice in the passage is fading away which makes it a viable shipping route and can potentially become more valuable than the Panama Canal. Currently, the Panama Canal has a width of 110 feet, which is why most cargo ships in the world have that width, as well while the, while the Northwest Passage has a width that is thousands of feet wide at the narrowest point. If the US were to control Greenland, they would essentially lock down their 
control the Northwest Passage. The U.S. already exerts an influence on the West due to its possession of Alaska, and if it were to own Greenland, then it would be able to exert its control over the eastern side of the passage as well. With both the east and west sides of the passage under American control, the U.S. can block off ships from entering or leaving the passage if they so choose, giving the U.S. an extremely large control over global shipping trade. Besides giving the U.S. control over trade, Greenland's location also gives the U.S. certain militaristic benefits as well. During the Cold War, Greenland was considered a strategic location for a multitude of reasons. The first was that the largest Soviet Arctic port was only 1,800 kilometers away from the island, giving U.S. fighter planes and warships a launch pad to use in case anything went sour. The second is that Greenland is exactly halfway between Washington, D.C. and Moscow, which could help the U.S. keep a closer eye on the Soviet Union. And the third is that missile warning systems could be placed on the northern stretches of the island, alerting the U.S. of a possible missile strike hours ahead of strike time, making Greenland a shield of sorts. Today, while well, the thought of a war between the U.S. and Russia is gone for the most part, the U.S. could still establish military bases on the island like how it did in 1946 with Thule Air Base, which could allow the U.S. to exert more power of the Arctic. With the U.S. already in control of Alaska, if it were to build up its military support in both Arctic regions, then Russia's status as its dominant Arctic power would be severely threatened. To conclude, while the purchase of Greenland may come at a net negative today, it would certainly play off in the future as the world is getting warmer and geopolitics are shifting towards new areas. Still, I'd like to thank you for watching, make sure to like, and subscribe.